Hello, thank you for viewing this video. I'm going to right now give a source code walkthrough. I will first explain what this what this code or this Unity project is for. It's for actually it is a foundation for a game that will be made in the future. And the game will be a rugby game and this solution is going to cover the passing as well as the movement of the players both on and off the ball. The ball is given to a player randomly at start. We can move the player and the players that are off the ball will follow the player information. I can move left, right, and I can even move like this in between players. I can move over there if I move back the other players will follow me and they'll try to be behind me or in line if I move forward all other players will follow me in a formation I can pass the ball right and I can also pass the ball left if a player is in front of me he will not receive the pass I can long pass by pressing down Y and then holding the respective shoulder button if I press down while longer and then I hit any bumper, it's going to pass even longer. The passing is being handled by an animation curve. That's the reason why the ball travels in an arc. The arc will be more visible when the when the pass is actually longer. I can pass longer like that. and I can even give short passes however if a player is in front of me he will not receive the pass if I'm over here and I try to pass the ball to the player on the left I won't be able to pass I only pass if I press Y and then press and then press uh, the uh, left bumper as it becomes a long pass this is no longer a short pass this is no longer a short pass it becomes a long pass also if a player is in front of me the game will not register a pass I can only pass it to players that are behind me the players are being spawned at runtime this is the players on pitch prefab that has a players on pitch script which I'll open right now the players on pitch script has variables the first is the game control variable we have a boolean give ball to a random player which is used to give the ball to a random player at start we've got players child which is actually a game object variable that is going to store the player child we have a camera target a camera container we have a ball object we have a player AI object and the players on pitch list at start we'll spawn the ball we're going to set the list and we'll say spawn all players 10 which is a function to spawn players this is going to spawn players it's a for loop that is being used to spawn players. Once the player is spawned, it's added to list. Players on pitch list. Once you spawn on the players, we are going to give the ball to a random player if the boolean is true. We are going to give the ball to a random player using these functions. We'll also take the script that is attached to the player called player movement and AI and we are also going to actually set the set some of the variables inside this player movement AI script we are going to select a random player from the list and we are going to set its state to hasball 
we're going to set the player as the target of the of the of the camera we're going to select current ball holder to the player and we're going to set parent as ball parent we need to set the parent the ball of the parent as the player parent because we need to make sure that the player actually moves the ball and the ball moves with the player we want to have set current ball holder and we're going to set the player in the list that was randomly selected to hold the ball we are going to also be setting the player as the target so we are going to say camera target is equal to player target I'll transform once we go in the movement uh, player movement AI we've got variables over here we've got a player state enum we've got a variable for the player states we have got a reference to the players on pitch script. We've got a rigid body reference. We've got a movement vector reference. We've got a ball position transform reference, and we've got has ball boolean. We get the rigid body, and we set the movement vector to zero. We set up the player material. The player material has a friction, dynamic friction, static friction, and we also set the uh, set the shared material of the capsule collider attached to the player using this statement. We've got get user input and we also have handle player states. The handle player states is going to simply set the set the state of the player. If the player has the ball, we're going to set the state to player state dot has ball. We also have get user input which is going to get the user input from the joystick. If we are off ball, we have a movement, and we if we have ball, we have movement. Do control is just going to s add a force to the rigid body. If we are, we are basically the player. If we are the player, and we also have the have the ball. If we do not have the ball, we'd like to move with respect to the player that is uh, that actually has the ball. So we have got off ball movement here and we have a position variable which is actually taking the uh, player also on pitch dot player that has ball currently to our transform dot position which is basically the transform or the position of the player that has the ball we have a reference to the transform of this uh, of the script we have flow difference in z which is actually the flow uh, the difference of uh, the z difference of the player that has the ball and the then the player that we are currently checking which is off the ball then we have float distance from player is equal to position minus transform dot position dot magnitude which is basically comparing the distance between the player that has the ball and this player then we have if difference in z is equal to greater than zero uh, the difference in z is greater than zero we will actually add a force to move the player forward and if it's in negative you're going to move the player forward and if it's I mean if it's positive you'll move the player backward so this basically means that the player is in front of the player that has the ball and this is for the player that is behind like if you're behind the player that has the ball this is going to be the statement that will run if you're in front of the player that has the ball then this is the statement that will run so you this statement basically makes sure that you're in line with the player that has the ball and this statement makes sure that you are behind the player that has the ball in the ball states we're going to cover passing we have two ball states is free and has possession once we have public state current ball we have private float collider time we have private rigid body this rigid body we have got a capsule collider this capsule collider the capsule colliders are off by the way we've got players on pitch reference we've got is passing boolean we've got a throw curve we have got throw power and curve time we get a few initialize a few variables over here. We have got current ball state is equal to ball state dot has possession, which means we have a possession of the ball at start. If we have got is if you're in is free state, then we have set physics and ball is free, and we set is to is kinematic true. We have a collider timer, which is going to basically 
turn the collider on but we're, we actually have this commented out because we never need to turn the collider on at the moment then we have got collider time is equal to malatav, uh, malatav dot clamp, which is just uh, just to make sure that the collider time does not exceed a certain value we're not using this right now we've got set throw power which is also responsible for passing the ball in set throw power we are going to get the jump input and if we have the jump input which is Y on the Xbox controller we are going to add throw power or we are going to increase throw power and make sure that it doesn't exceed this value we are going to go and check whether the left shoulder or right shoulder is has been released and if it has been released we will initiate the pass I'll just delete this print statement we have do pass and we also set the throw power again do pass is this where is this function we check each and every player that's on the pitch if we are the player that is on the pitch and we also have the ball we'll ignore if we have is passing false we'll turn this to true we have got uh, right shoulder for right shoulder which is passed to us right and uh, we're going to check whether the player is in front is is behind whether the player that we're checking is behind the player and if the player is towards the right this is the if statement for that we then take another look at how far the player is and if it's, it's, and if it's uh, a certain distance we'll change his passing crew and we'll change and we'll start a co-routine called pass the ball the for the left passing the statement is pretty much the same except that it's reversed in pass the ball we take the transform ball position using this statement we're going to set the position for curve at zero we're going to have a lerp for curve then we have uh, we delete all the keys from the curve and then we add keys based on the arc that we have defined which is going to be uh, the arc basically the 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 curve is going to make the ball reach the highest point when uh, it's right in the middle of the player that is going to receive the ball and the player that threw the ball so this is that key and this is this is going to be set to value of zero then we have curve time over here while we haven't reached the uh, player the target player we are going to continue going along along the curve al along the animation curve we are going to move the move the ball towards the player using the values from the animation curve and we are going to add uh, curve time to make sure that the wave actually progresses once we have reached a certain distance as well as we will break we will give the ball to the player and we will turn its passing to false that is your source code walkthrough